Sooner or later, everyone's going to have to deal with a failed checkout. In order to simulate this, in the download pack, you'll find the directory mo3lo3 failed1. If you now navigate to Subversion Guru WC and just check that you've got that directory, we can proceed. The first issue is how to identify a failed checkout. In this instance, we're going to be using the status command. The status command is covered in more detail later in the course. For now, we'll simply use it and explain the small parts that we need. So, we issue the status command specifying that we want the status of the mo3lo3 failed1 directory. The status command returns one line. The beginning of the line is an exclamation point. This exclamation point is informing us that the item on the line is missing from the working copy identified at MO3LO3 failed 1. In actual fact, it's telling us that MO3LO3 failed 1, many ders, der2, sub2 is missing from our working copy. What this means is our working copy is incomplete. Obviously, in a real life situation, a missing subdirectory with all of its contents would be a serious problem. To correct this problem, we're going to repeat the checkout command. We know that MO3LO3 failed1 originally came from the trunk. We know this because we checked it out. We're going to repeat the checkout command, specifying that the URL we want to check out is the localhost MO3LO3 trunk, and that the destination is to be MO3LO3 failed1. This is exactly the same command that would have been used to create the original working copy directory. As the command runs, you'll notice that it's adding sub2 and all of its subdirectories and the files that they contain. Finally, it tells us that we're checked out at revision 3. Looking at the repository, we can see that the sub2 directory does indeed contain sub sub1 and various files and subdirectories therein, and these are now checked out into our working copy, making it complete. Repeating the status command that we used at the beginning to identify the problem, we see that we now get a blank line response. A blank line response means that there's no status changes within this working copy to be reported. In other words, in this case, we've repaired the problem. Turning our attention now to the second failed working copy, MO3LO3 failed2, we repeat the status command that we used before, but this time specifying the new path. Once again, status is shown as an exclamation point at the beginning of the line, indicating that the sub2 directory is missing from this working copy also. This time, rather than repeating the checkout, we'll use the update command. We'll cover update in more detail later in the course, but for now, I just want to show you how to use it to repair a working copy that's been broken. Issue the update command, specifying the root of the working copy, in this case MO3LO3 failed2, as its target. As the command runs, you can see once again that the sub2 directory and all its subdirectories and the files and folders that they contain are being added into our working copy. The command ends with an updated to revision 3 message telling us that we're now up to date with the content of the repository. Finally, we'll use the svn status command to verify that we have indeed repaired our working copy. And a blank line tells us that yes, the update command has successfully repaired the working copy. We'll repeat our status command, specifying MO3LO3 failed3 as our target. This time the returned line has a tilde at the beginning of the line. The tilde indicates that the corresponding item is obstructed. What this means in this instance is that the sub2 directory exists within the working copy directory structure, but it's not identified as a versioned object. This means that any attempt by Subversion to check out or to update the working copy will fail because it doesn't know what to do with the sub2 directory. It can't simply overwrite it for fear that the user has created the sub2 directory for a purpose. But at the same time, it can't create a consistent working copy for us without overwriting it. The result of this is an obstructed message, which warns us that we have an inconsistent working copy that Subversion can't automatically correct. If we simply attempt to do an update, as we did previously, we'll receive a message which tells us that the directory sub2 has been deleted. 
Repeating the status command, we discover that the sub2 directory is still obstructed. In other words, our update has failed to actually correct the problem. In order to correct the problem, we have to eliminate the sub2 directory, which is obstructing the subversion client. To do this, we simply use the operating system remove directory command and delete the sub2 directory and any of its content. Having removed the obstructed item, a file, or in this case, a directory, we can repeat the update command, and this time it runs as we expect. It adds the sub2 directory and all of its content, and tells us that we're updated to revision 3. Repeating the status command now returns the empty line that we would expect if our working copy was consistent with our current repository.